like to get to our keynote speaker this morning. Um, in 2005, the WTO ministerial meetings were held in Hong Kong, probably the biggest international meetings ever held in the history of this city. And at that time, Lion Rock was about a year old. Uh, the only friends we had really at that time were in the international community. About 10,000 anti-free trade protesters descended on the city, and they were ferocious. They were the epitome of welfare populism, but somehow seemed to have millions and millions of dollars to fly to Hong Kong and cause trouble in our city. The very small group of free trade, pro-free trade people who wanted to see success at that meeting included some people in this room. I know Philip Stevens was there, Varun was there, got caught in the lockdown uh, when the riots started. When Lion Rock said we wanted to work with our international friends like you to be able to speak and spread the message of free trade, we were told no. Low-level functionaries said, can't be done, too dangerous, 10,000 of them, crazy, about 40 of you, sensible, no. You guys are going to get mauled. It got kicked up the chain of command and we met the man that was in charge of the entire show. The man who had to deal with all this madness and hopefully get a good result, that man was John Sock, and he has, to this day, continued to be a very good friend of the Institute and Economic Freedom. So I just wanted to get that little personal story because that was the first time that I met uh, the financial secretary and I value that, that friendship since then. Um, for perhaps a more formal introduction for those of you that aren't from Hong Kong, I'd like to introduce somebody who is known to you now, uh, the chairman of the Lion Rock Institute, Mr. Bill Stacy. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, and I'd uh, again like to reiterate that, um, that John Sun has long been a friend. I didn't realize that he is also a strong Led Zeppelin fan. Um, he trained as an architect. He's been a tireless um, you know, public servant for um, you know, the interests of Hong Kong and you know, his conscientious diligence. Um, has uh, been vital to uh, helping Hong Kong in its tr transition of government, governance, dealing with a series of um, challenging economic situations. And, and we were terribly pleased to know that under the recent administrative changes, he's continuing to play a role there, which I think is, um, is very vital. Um, not only were we friends on WTO, when the budgets come out year after year in Hong Kong, but are balanced. Um, and when there's a little bit of fiscal prudence that almost the entire legislature complains about and says we should spend more money, um, there's John Sung and there's Lion Rock saying we think you've done the right thing in balancing the budget. Um, and sometimes it seems a little lonely and when John's lonely, um, he will always have a friend with us on those issues. I'd, I'd like to in particular suggest that you know, Hong Kong has done a couple of things really well in the pa past few years that John was instrumental in. And one was the response to the financial crisis. Um, in many, many ways, um, it was handled very well. Um, the Hong Kong government didn't undermine price signals. There were no short-selling bans. They kept liquidity in place in financial markets in Hong Kong using classic budget-style central banking principles. Um, they did provide support to banks, but it was priced at a commercial price or thereabouts, and it was time-limited, and it finished. And, and I think it was a wonderful model for how you should deal with a financial crisis that should have been followed in other countries. And I think that um, it worked so well here, partly because the Hong Kong administration had a lot of experience of crisis. And I think this has actually been central to Hong Kong in the years as the crisis has hopefully um, dwindled, getting a lot more business because it was a liquid market that was one of the few that was open for business during the dark days of the financial crisis. But we now look to the future, and it's often the case that um, it's easier in some ways to deal with the crisis under pressure um, than the period afterwards when people relax and the pressure comes off. Um, and it is interesting in Hong Kong, um, as there have been uh, efforts to um, say that the principles of positive non-intervention of big markets and small government that had been formally um, uh, adopted by people within the government to some guiding principles are now said to be anachronistic. And we are concerned about what this might mean for the future. At the handover to China um, of uh, sovereignty, um, a wonderful thing for many Chinese people um, and the people who live in Hong Kong, government share of GDP was 11%. Today it's over 20%. Um, there are new laws like a minimum wage competition policy that's been adopted on a more or less European model that um, make us disturbed. And now, more recently, um, we have the introduction of a buyer's stamp duty, um, a special stamp duty, 
Um, we do have a problem in Hong Kong that housing um, and property prices are high, and there are many reasons for this, um, both the supply of land, the supply of housing, um, uh, the, um, uh, the fact that Hong Kong is a very popular place to live for very good reasons. Um, you know, flight money from other parts of the world, and also monetary causes that underpin that. So Hong Kong people are rightly um, concerned about affordability of housing in Hong Kong. But it seems strange to us that uh, the answer of the government has actually been to make property less affordable, to introduce new taxes and raise the price of property to quite punitive levels, but not for everyone, only for some. And we're concerned that this might offend the rule of law. We certainly think it offends good economics. And it's something that is um, popular, uh, sorry, populist, but not unpopular in Hong Kong. We worry about the unintended consequences of other prices going up, the price of rent as people who can't buy have to uh, rent, of commercial property prices. We worry about less liquidity in the property market, which is clearly dried up. And we worry about the exit problem, because this wasn't a sunsetted measure. We don't know how it will end, and exiting will create further problems. So there is a great deal that is very good in Hong Kong. We um, certainly love this city and think that it uh, is a beacon for the rest of the world in policy in many ways. And we certainly think it deserves the number one ranking that uh, Fred and Fraser have again conferred upon Hong Kong. Um, but there are threats from populism to this policy. I've just given you an example for the sake of creating a debate between friends. Um, uh, and the consequences of the theme of this conference are everywhere and even in the places that are most free, um, we must continue to be vigilant. I think John is vigilant and I'd uh, like to welcome him um, to, the, uh, to speak today. Thank you.